Hi, we're here live at CES 2015 at the WebMD Lounge. I'm Dr. Daniel Kraft, Chair of Medicine at Singularity University and Exponential Medicine, here with Daniel Rupart from Frost & Sullivan. Uh, we're going to take a, have a conversation looking at the uh, cutting edge and future of digital health. So, welcome Daniel. Great, thank you very much for having me here today. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, your role at Frost & Sullivan, and what you're seeing here this year. Sure, so I'm the research director for healthcare here in uh, North America for Frost & Sullivan. I primarily work in a program we call Connected Health, which is really about all sorts of aspects of markets that leverage information technology and healthcare in some way. Right. And, and Frost & Sullivan, as we know, you, know, you look at a, a whole spectrum of technologies and where they're heading. Um, so here you've been focusing on the future of connected and digital health. What, what trends are you seeing? What, what, what's surprising you here at CES and in, and in general? Well, I think there's some really interesting things going on in the marketplace, especially from what I've seen here at CES uh, this year. I think some key items are the continued integration of fashion and the importance of that uh, in wearable devices in digital health. You saw the uh, interesting announcement and launch of the product from Misfit, which is of course more targeted at women in terms of the Jewel device, or even the device that will be able to be powered by solar power from them as well. Um, so I think you saw some of that last year, but I think you will, this pedal I would expect would continue to be pressed in 2015 in terms of the importance of fashion, because these vendors are really trying to also stratify their products and portfolios across more diverse aspects of demographic groups. Right, we're in trying the to integrate these connected health devices with our fashion, with our sense of style, and of course battery life is right, the killer exactly. for many of these. A lot of these connected health devices end up in the drawer when you've lost the charger. So now yeah. the ability is to keep them going. So what about the actual uh, ability of these tools uh, to impact health, wellness, and healthcare? What are you seeing in that realm? Well, I think that people are still trying to understand that in the market from all the different aspects of the different stakeholders, right? Be it with the payer, the provider, and the consumer, and what will be the value of these devices. And I think people will continue to try to understand and demonstrate um, from pilots or other things the return on investment of the use of this data. But we continue to see that the question about what is the value of the consumer-generated data in the context of normal aspects of enterprise health IT data, and how, how can that be used, or will that be used, or what part of that will be used in reality by providers going forward. Right, and that means it has to tie back to, like physicians like myself, I want to prescribe a quantified self device that blends to quantified health, and with Samsung, Google, Apple getting back into the match, that data starts to be able to flow potentially back to my electronic medical record, so it becomes really not just a health device, but a, a medical device. Right, exactly, and, and I think you mentioned Apple. I think one key point for 2015 is what I call watch the watch. So what actually happens with Apple's watch in the marketplace and, and what do people look to that for in terms of its use in healthcare, right? It, we know that the smart watches, including that one, will not destroy the wearables market itself in terms of the use in fitness or other applications, but it, does this have better uptake than the other types of devices that have already been launched with their competing vendors in the marketplace? Or what role will that play in that broader ecosystem of devices that consumers or, and, the, and the others try to leverage, of course, in healthcare in some way? So given your perspective, seeing the spectrum, what predictions would you make you know, from 2015 onwards uh, on the implications of this for payers, physicians, consumers, uh, any sort of meta trends? Yeah, I think definitely you will eventually within the next five years see larger scale use of some of these things, probably in certain um, key demographics of patients, more around specific chronic disease conditions, things that tie also back to what are key diseases of focus in re-admission prevention right now will continue to expand. Things like from heart disease or other things from the pulmonary side, for example, first. Um, I, I think you will uh, increasingly see the interest in telehealth and telehealth services, of course, um, CMS has important changes this next year related to some aspects of management of chronic conditions and how things will be paid for. What is the impact of that on remote monitoring, telehealth, telehealth services? You will continue to see that um, come to the forefront increasingly in use in healthcare the next probably five years. Terrific, and how do folks connect with you and Foss and Sullivan to sort of access some of your, your thinking and anal analysis on this? Sure, so I can be followed on Twitter at, uh, at Daniel Rupar, or you can find about all of our, our connected health practice and the other work that we do in healthcare at uh, www.frost.com. 
Great. Well, thank you, Daniel. Uh, I'm Daniel Kraft here at CS 2015, looking at the future of connected and digital healthcare. Thanks for joining us.